Hello designers! Um, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about making a mock-up using a clipping mask. So um, let's get started. Now this is a, um, a mock-up that I've had for a long time and I've made lots of different changes and adaptations to it. Um, <clears throat> but let's start off with just the basics. Taking a look at these layers here, um, I've put some different color coatings on them. And if you haven't used these before, you can right click near the eye icon and change them to different colors. For this one, I've just kind of made a bit of a color key code for myself. So changing this foil um, will add that kind of orangey brown background. Taking this one off and adding this guy right here will make it orange because it has that kind of rose gold look to it. This one's a kind of a pure yellow. And if we turn them all off, we can see that this text file is just in black. So let's get started with how do you begin to work with a mock-up. So this right here is simply a smart object. We know it's a smart object because of this little denotation in the corner. I've labeled this layer put stuff here. So what you do is you right click and edit contents. Now we come over here and we can see exactly what's translated. Um, this rectangle here has a gap next to the A. So let's go ahead, command T, and just extend this over into our A. When I hit enter, we can see it's a little bit lower than we want. So I'm going to hit V and cursor it up by one little pixel there. All that I need to do now is go ahead and hit save. And when I come back from this PSB file to my untitled one, um, we can see that those have connected nicely now. Now let's say we want to continue kind of playing around with moving our text or changing our text altogether. I can go to edit content, grab my cursor for Bella Vita. We can change this to any given text that we want, shrink it down so it lines up, and hit Command S. Once it does its magic saving, we can come straight back to our file. There we are. Now I'm not sure if that's a better change or not, but maybe we want to extend the text out just a little bit. So let's come back to Edit Content, and we're going to grab our character tab. Here I'm going to make the text a little bigger. Maybe shrink it down just a touch because I want it to come all the way over to my Y. So I can grab my view rulers and grab a quick guide just to put right there on the end so we know that we're going to get our text the way we want it. I'm going to make just a tiny shift. There we go. I think that looks pretty fun. And I'm going to grab the top layer, my bottom layer, hold shift, grab my V, my move tool, and just kind of center that up a little bit. Now I'm going to hit Command S come back to our file. There we go. That looks awesome. And now we can kind of talk about some of the other um, options that we can play around with in here. Since these are smart objects, we can use smart filters. So we can go to our filter gallery and pick any kind of changes and adaptations that we want. We come down to a texture, we can add a stained glass look to it, and since these are smart filters, I can say, okay, let's go check out how that looks. And come over here and see, I really don't see too much of a change in it, but if I wanted all of these textures off, I can turn them off like so. Same thing with effects. So I'm going to come up here and go to double click, open up my effects menu and my layer style. 
So right here you can see that I have added a bevel and an emboss to this. I prefer an inner bevel, but let's look at what an outer bevel will do to kind of pop the effect to the outside edge. There's quite a bit of difference there, and I will move our depth up and down so you can see the difference. That might be way too much. So let's go back to an inner bevel and we can make it a little bit deeper actually that looks pretty nice and play around until we're happy with the direction of the bevel there we've moved it to the left upper it can re come down from the bottom going up but I think it looks pretty nice from the top we've got different types of contours that's a gloss contour I think that one looks awesome. Actually, I do like it better here. And we've got all of our overlay menus here too. So we could change it to a multiply overlay or a screen and really see those differences. I'm gonna leave it as a soft light here and just say, okay. We can turn those effects on and off by looking at the edges where those bevels are without Give it a second and with. Pretty fun. Um, overall, you I would also like for you to play around with different colors and textures in the background. So here I've clipped a gold foil. If I right click and release the clay clipping mask, you can see what that picture looks like. Right click, create clipping mask, and it's just clipped to this text file. So we can change it from all different colors. I think if we did this one, it might be kind of nice to take the opacity down, play around with different blending modes, screen, lighten, so on and so forth. And then one last note is the background color. So here we can click on our background color and change it however we would like. Let's make this one a little bit darker. All I'm going to do is hit my paint bucket tool. There we go. A lot more contrast. I've also added a gradient fill that you can see here. And I think that it's more visible when we have a little bit lighter background. So let's lighten that background back up. And you can see the radial gradient. Remember, it's all editable. So we can change our gradient fill from a radial to a linear. And then we're going to see it pop into a line. We can have a very dramatic angled one which actually might be kind of cool if we moved that center point below the A, uh, a reflected gradient, and a diamond gradient. I kind of like the diamond gradient. Uh, we can always change our angle on these here and the scale. So let's bring it way down. You'll be able to see that diamond gradient a little bit better. It's kind of dramatic. I don't mind it so much. But again, it doesn't matter what changes we make to this because the original file was a Photoshop document template. So now I can save this as anything that I would like and I still have my original BVP in gold right here as a PSDT. So we're gonna come over here, do a file save as, I think we should call this one diamond. So BVP diamond gradient. And we can go ahead and save it. Our original untitled folder, our file is undamaged. So we can come back to this PSDT and do whatever kind of stuff we wanna do. Maybe we're just going to edit content. We like all of everything except for this shape not lining up. So I'm gonna drag that over, hit enter, hit V, pop that up one time, and then I'm going to do a save. Come back over here and it's lined up perfectly. Um, for this tutorial, there has been, let me go back to my BBP one, um, 
two different textures clipped to a smart object that has a FX of um, a layer style effect of bevel and emboss and three or four smart filters on there that are really fun that we can play around with. And remember, we see this little icon over here to the right. It will open up and show us all of our blending, turn them on and off to use them as we wish. Same thing with our gradient in the background, or if we thought it was just a little bit too dramatic, we could turn the opacity down on it. Um, I hope that this tutorial helps you realize that mockups aren't always just for image, photographic image based items. You can use a mockup to quickly change text and create a workflow for yourself that makes it easier to create content, save, and post it on the go. Thanks guys!